power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom. The power, the power of, of the, the heart. heart, finding the power of the heart. Power of the heart. The power. Power of the heart. Power of the heart. 让我们学会新的力量。Thank you for joining us today. My name is Yuru Chow. You are tuning in to the Power of the Heart on Da Ai Radio. Dharma Master Zhen Yan views the Earth as a microcosm and human body as a microcosm. When our mind is out of balance, we act out in wrongdoings. The consequence can be personal disturbance. To global climate change, we see that these two systems are interrelated to each other. To have world peace, each individual must be peaceful at heart. In our program today, we'll begin with a reading of Master Zhen Yan's teaching on life economics, about correcting our perception in the way we view things as big or small. This reading is provided by Mr. Colin Lagerton. Then, after a short break, we'll discuss this teaching with Miss May Ling. Thank you for giving me such a warm embrace, staying by my side when I feel sad. Now my heart is full of love. I won't bend. In the wind, let my shoulder for people to cry on. Sincerely, I give you an understanding smile, staying by your side when you worry. Just when you raise your head and your tears flow no more. Oh, how it moves my heart! I know there's love in this world that's worth waiting for. Children's hearts will open up eventually. Wounds will heal when we forgive. Doubts will vanish when we care. Trust is the most. You are listening to the Power of the Heart on Die Radio, tapping into the power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom, finding the power of the heart. Chapter Four: Penetrating Space. Space encompasses the four directions and the opposing positions of up and down. Let us take Hualien for example. To its east is the ocean, and east of this ocean is the United States. East of the United States is another east. Because the Earth is round, there are an infinite number of easts, wests, souths, and norths. The universe is so immense and wide that it has no boundaries. This is space. The minds of sages are not limited to the space on Earth, but are vast enough to encompass the entire universe. The Buddha's mind encompasses the entire vast Dharma realm. One day, Madhulyayana, one of the Buddha's top disciples, famous for his ability and supernatural powers, decided to measure the size of the Buddha's Dharma body. He rose up and up until he reached Triyashrimsha heaven. And then to see the heaven, but he still did not reach the limits of the Buddha's Dharma body. To some people, this story is only a myth. Actually, it is an allegory to show that the Buddha's mind is so vast it can reach anywhere. Where Buddha's mind exists, the Dharma exists. The Buddha was born in India more than two thousand years ago. After attaining Buddhahood, he traveled along the Ganges River teaching the Dharma. In that era, it was quite a challenge for the Buddha to spread the Dharma alone. It took the work of many people for the Buddha's Dharma to spread widely. Thanks to the ancient sages for going on pilgrimages to obtain the Buddha's scriptures, and for translating and teaching them. 
Because of their contributions, the Dharma became prevalent and continues to exist today. That is why, although the Buddha never visited Taiwan, Buddhist Dharma still prevails here. Among others, the Venerable Master Yin Xun, a great teacher of humanistic Buddhism, transcribed the essence of Buddhism into many books. Yet more people are still needed to practice and promote Buddhism in the world. Space is vast. No one can travel all paths in this world. Spreading the Dharma far and wide requires many people working together with great love. When everyone takes the Buddhist teachings to heart, their pure and bright thoughts can illuminate all corners. Only then can Buddhism be practiced throughout the world. Section 1. The Myth of Big and Small The earth is a macrocosm, and our bodies are like microcosms. The earth is composed of four elements, as are our bodies. In the universe, the earth has four elements. Its hard, solid shell is earth. The hot interior, which gives rise to the magnificent lava and thermal heat, is fire. The flowing waterways are water, and the air is wind. If any one of these elements is out of accord, the earth will encounter problems. Our bodies are like microcosms. The solid parts of the body, including muscles and bones, are the earth element. Body fluids, blood, and saliva are water. The body's warmth is fire, and our breath the wind. If any one of these elements is not in harmony, we become sick. The breathing problem of asthma, for example, is a case of the wind element out of balance. When we catch a cold and develop fevers or chills, the fire element is out of balance. People are often rushed to the emergency room with acute abdominal pains due to severe constipation, which is the water element out of balance. External injuries and bone fractures that we see frequently are examples of the earth element out of balance. When we fall ill, we suffer unspeakable pain. Macrocosm and microcosm are intimately related to one another. As it cycles through four seasons, the macrocosm gives life to humans and all sentient beings. Each living being is a microcosm, and there are already more than 7 billion people on Earth. If afflictions of greed, anger, and ignorance continue to rise because our minds are out of balance, then we will continue to commit wrongdoings and damage the macrocosm, bringing the Earth into discord. The consequences will be severe indeed. Greed and Narrow-Mindedness Our thoughts are constantly arising and vanishing. A momentary thought can be good or bad. When an arising thought is good, we should take hold of that moment to do good deeds. On the other hand, when an arising thought is bad, we must immediately stamp it out. Imagine if we simply allowed our bad tempers to go unchecked every time we had conflicts with others. With more than 7 billion people in the world, all those bad tempers and bad attitudes would aggregate in the macrocosm. When the body's immune system is just a little weak, it can lead to many health problems. When the macrocosm consists of so many microcosms out of balance, how can it not become ill? There is so much strife and struggle in our world. Does it not all come from greed? Why are we so greedy? Life is impermanent. We should be content and grateful to live in peace. How much more do we need to feel like we have enough? A clean and stable place to shelter us from the wind and rain is really all we need. Our desires are insatiable. No matter how much enjoyment or wealth we have, it is never enough. Some people already live in abundance, but they long for a more luxurious life. Even if they already live in a grand mansion, they are not content, so they toil for more. How can they be truly happy? Many years ago, a Chinese woman from the Philippines came to visit me. I commented, your home must be very lively with so many workers there. I am very lonely, she replied. There are so many people in your house. How can you be lonely? I asked. She told me, because the house is so large, I dare not live alone. That is why I hired more servants. Some maids cook, some do the laundry, some clean the house. They all have their separate jobs. I said, you are the only one living there. Do you really need so many maids? She answered, the labor is so cheap. I only need to provide them with three meals a day. I said, with so many people eating together, your meal time must be very lively. No, I eat alone, she told me. Do they not work for their three meals? Why do you eat alone? 
They can only eat after I finish my meal and leave the dinner table, she replied. I asked again, why? That is their rule, she replied. There is no such thing as their rule. You can let them eat with you. Won't you have more company then? It is probably a rule between master and servant, she said. Why is there such a big difference between the master and the servant? Maids work hard to serve their masters, yet it is so difficult for the masters to give a little bit more to their maids. How much harder it must be for them to give to a complete stranger. Some people are wealthy and live comfortably, yet they are unwilling to give a little to the poor and help them through hard times. Having so much, yet not knowing how to use it, their wealth is the same as trash. With insatiable desire burning in their hearts, they are bound tightly by a rope, unable to squirm free. Helping others is a precious blessing. When we help others, we are also helping ourselves. Unfortunately, most people do not understand this principle. They do not realize that if they give without seeking anything in return, they can be worry-free and at ease. Therefore, people who are too stingy to give will not be able to develop respectable and lovable virtues. I heard a story about an elderly real estate tycoon who sent his children abroad for advanced study. After finishing school, they all stayed abroad to find jobs and raise their families. He and his wife stayed in Taiwan by themselves. After his wife passed away, he lived alone. Although he owned a lot of property and assets, no one really cared about him because he had neglected to give love and friendship to others when he was young. He became very lonely. He later moved to Hualien and bought a fancy villa. Although his house was furnished extravagantly, he still lived all by himself. In his old age, he had no one to care for him when he got sick. In and out of the hospital, he was always alone. None of his children came back to look after him since they all lived abroad. His relatives and friends also kept their distance. He finally realized that his loneliness was due to his lack of giving. With that realization, he vowed to do his best to contribute after regaining health. Unfortunately, he passed away before he had the chance to carry out his vows. One day he suffered an asthma attack and died alone at home. It was too late to revive him when he was found and taken to the hospital. So, lonely, he left this world. Who was there by his side? Who was there to care for him? Who accompanied him on his final journey? Who would manage his assets and distribute them? He no longer had any say in this. He did not even have the chance to fulfill his last wish. All his life, he was probably never truly happy. What could he take with him when he died? Only regrets and afflictions. It is better to expand the cottage of the mind than to live unfulfilled in a large mansion. Once you broaden your heart, you will naturally use your money to benefit humankind, instead of wasting it lavishly. Once you change your mindset, you will be empowered to help and create good affinities with others. Broad Mind, Broad World I often say it is better to have a big heart than a big house. Living in this world, if we maintain a mindset of contentment and fewer desires, then we will feel happy in any situation we encounter. Having a broad mind or a big heart has nothing to do with being rich or poor. Even if you are poor on the outside, if you have a big heart, your world will be expansive. In China, Guizhou has a beautiful landscape. Sadly, the land is fruitless, the locals are poor, and the mountainous roads are hard to travel. Some of the children must climb mountains to attend school. They get up before dawn at four o'clock every morning, prepare their own breakfast, then rush to school. They arrive at school around eight o'clock. It takes four hours of walking each way. Therefore, by the time they get home, it is nine o'clock at night. During the holidays, these students have to take cows out to the pasture for their families. Once, a Dai television reporter went to Guizhou on an assignment. He saw three children sitting on rocks by the roadside and reading their books attentively. He asked why they were sitting there. The children told him that they were tending cows. Where are the cows? the reporter asked. The children looked around and could not see their cows. They were surprised to find that the cows had wandered far down the pasture. They immediately went and retrieved their cows, wearing innocent smiles on their faces. These young kids get up so early and come home so late every day to attend school. Since their families are poor, they eat cold rice porridge and cold dishes. 
yet they appreciate their parents' hard work. They help out with household chores and study diligently. They live happily and are optimistic towards their future. This is being content with no greedy desires. We often have insatiable desires, but how much is enough? No one really knows. Regardless of how much we possess, everything will be gone when a disaster hits. In recent years, California has seen many forest fires. These fires not only destroyed forests, they also burned down many luxury homes. It is said that wealth adorns the home, but virtue adorns the individual. The wealthy decorate their houses lavishly, yet individuals show virtue through conduct. If we let our behavior go unchecked and let our mind go astray, then we will need a great deal of time to bring our mind back on track. Therefore, we must always look into our hearts, eliminate greed, and dignify our minds. There is a poor family that lives on the top of a hill in Miaoli. The parents are divorced and the father works in another city, so the three children live alone with their grandmother. Although the oldest sister is young, she is quite mature. She takes care of her grandmother and does all the household chores. She also studies hard, loves her siblings, and helps them do well in school. One day, she accidentally scalded her feet with boiling water. Not able to afford medical attention, she walked with difficulty and often hurt herself. When Siji volunteers visited her family and saw the shabby housing, they decided to fix up the family's lodging first. When the girl and her father were away from home, the volunteers came to repair the damaged areas and repaint the entire house. They also added a few pieces of second-hand furniture. Upon returning home, the girl was pleasantly surprised to see their house renovated with additional furniture. She made a vow to study harder so she could attend college and give back to society. She wanted to love others the same way she had been loved. The girl was so strong and resilient that she never once complained about her injury. Tsuji volunteers arranged for her to be treated and undergo surgery at Buddhist Tsuji General Hospital in Dalin. Throughout her stay in the hospital, her younger sister frequently came and cared for her. It was touching to see the close bond between the two sisters. There are many fortunate children who are loved and pampered by their parents. Yet they are disagreeable with their siblings and complain that their parents love their siblings more. To command the attention of their parents, they even commit wrongdoings to upset their parents. We should learn to cultivate our virtues, take good care of our loving hearts, and understand that the world will be broader when we take one step back. Only then will we be able to love others. Keep a broad mind and love and accommodate others, then we will always be loved. In our daily lives, we should nurture ourselves to be generous and giving. When we are content and have few desires, we can encompass all. With a broad mind, our world too will be broad. Radio is just a click away. You can listen to Da Ai Radio anywhere in the world. Our special guest today is Miss May Ling. She was born and raised in Taiwan. For graduate study, she went to New York, United States. Then she moved to Germany to advance her study of vocal training as mezzo soprano. Eventually, she got married and settled down in Germany. Welcome to the program, May. Thank you for joining us. Hi, May. How did you find out about Ziji? Um, actually, I get to know Ziji because my mom she joined Ziji first, and because it's such a great happiness for her to become a Ziji member, then of course she convinced me to join her. At that time, um, we were building the Ziji、uh, Taipei Hospital, and we need to cook for the.、Um, Uh, workers over there because they all need to be vegetarian while they are working on city hospitals building. So you see, from the very foundation, this hospital is built with good wishes and accumulate a lot of good affinity by cooking them vegetarian meals. 
we made sure while they are building the hospital, they have this purity in them. They don't eat meat. They don't accumulate bad affinity with them by killing animals for food. Yeah, and I must say, I really learn a lot while cooking for them because the first day it was quite a shock for shock for me um, because. Um, I remember I was there since、um, seven o'clock in the morning, and I cook until eleven thirty. And we really prepare those meal, looks so nicely like a five stars hotel buffet. And I just think, okay, finally I can enjoy what I cook. I be stop and say, you need to wait until they finish their lunch. And I really learn what is respect. Respect and love are in your every single action that you really show them your respect and your love, and I think it speaks louder than words. Yes, yeah. So you now live in Germany.、Um, I know there are not many city volunteers in Europe. So what do you do volunteering with city in Europe?、Um, I live in、uh, Frankfurt, Germany. So I also try to get to know people and introduce the city to them. And see if they can become、um, the members of Ziji or friends of Ziji, or even become volunteers of Ziji. That I hope、um, maybe after、um, a few years that I also have a group of volunteers that can work together with me in Frankfurt. Very good. We need to develop more loving member of the community because when it is peaceful time, these are the work that we work on. So, in case of disaster or emergency, that we have people to rely on, to work with us, to serve the people in need. I know everyone usually think of Europe as this paradise, but I sure do know that disaster will happen anywhere. In Europe, have you participated in any disaster relief? Last year in Germany, there was a、um, central flood in East Germany. And I'm happy that I I hold a, a benefit concert in Frankfurt together with my core members. That we raised about、um, nearly three thousand euros at that time to donate to a, a love、um, factory for disabled people who are working over there. And the factory was destroyed during the flood. Oh, so sorry to hear that.、Um... Usually, when we see news, we thought of it so far away that disaster is so far away from us. But participating in Ziji, we go to this、uh, disaster area and really see how people suffer. What about Italy? What's your experience with Italy? Yeah, it's um, uh, it's also the other experience which not happen very often in Europe.、Um, it was a quite a serious earthquake. And、um, as everybody know, that Italy has a lot of beautiful old buildings, which over 300 or 400 years old. And、um, when I went there, I see the whole town destroyed by earthquake, and the people need to move out and live in、um, tent. And in summertime, it was very hot, like nearly 40 degree. And in winter time, it's also quite cold. So、um, at that time, we try our best to look、um, a way to help them. Thank you. I think、um, I saw in the Dai news that you distributed、um, emergency cash to many of these affected family, and it was so touched that people were actually there helping them from far away area. Because not only do you represent different European country, you also represent this love from all over the world to care for them, let them know, don't give up, that we are there for you. And I think that love with emergency cash really encourage them because the cash can be finished one day, but their love will stay with them forever. And that is why very often in Ziji we talk about giving love in order to have a life full of contentment and peace. What are some of your suggestions? I was a person who purchased lots of useless things before, like a beautiful clothes, or went to、um, salon and spent like more than two hundred dollar to do a per. And、um, but since joining Ziji, I realized that、uh, 
just by little things that can、uh, help lots of people. So、um, since I I have seen some people suffer in some areas, and we need to distribute like rice to them, I make a wish to myself that I hope that I can donate my first million I earned in my life、uh, to Cici that、um, the money can really、um, very useful for those people in need. Because you have this greater mission to help people in need. And naturally, these unwholesome thoughts or desire naturally just leave you alone. Will never bother you again. Indeed, I try to control myself so much. Even、um, when I want to take the public transportation, I tell myself, "No, I need to、uh, save as much as possible, even even just little money." So I train myself to walk、um, instead of taking public bus and just.、Um, For example, many other things. I just tell myself, no more purchasing. That I want to reach my one million dollars as soon as possible. And because you learn to discipline yourself, you also don't need new clothes because you fit into your original clothes the same. <laughs> you yeah, don't need a new、indeed. size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also need to try to keep in fit. Yeah, join the city event, not to. Just eat a lot and sit at home and get fat. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you do a lot of city work, you'll be so busy. You'll not get fat. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So it's also kind of fitness, good fitness、um, activities. Yes. So if you want to get fit, join city. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. That by your example, doing a little bit that you can together. We join together to make a difference in our world, a little bit at a time. But that's already a very positive direction. Thank you,、so. May, for your time. Thank you. Our time is up today. We'll be listening to this book, Life Economics, over the next several episodes. Please join us next time to continue our discussion on life economics. If you want to read this book we're talking about, you can find a copy of this book in any Jingzi Bookstore and Cafe. For more teachings from Dharma Master Zheng Yan, please tune in next time to our program. Goodbye and have a great day. Love's the language of ourselves. Love's held in hearts, not hands alone. Love's our small wish for you to enjoy. We wish you forever peace and joy. Love walks tall while sharing smiles. Love's bound in silent gratitude's eyes. Love's giving more than yesterday. Believing strong, brave, and not afraid. Give love openly as the sun shines warm light on you and me across every distance. So show our love, dare to dance. Spread love readily, paint the long road well ahead tenderly. Your soothing blessings, heal all pain and suffering.